First story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not wanting to sell my Hyundai to pay for the wedding? First of all, I'd like to mention, I, 30 male, drive two hours every day for work. I've been looking for a job with my degree for a long time, and there were no job opportunity available in my area. The nearest company is two hours away, and I cannot move because of my house mortgage. My fiancé of one year has been rushing me for a wedding, saying she's waited longer than any of her friends did. She asked if I could ask my parents to pay. But my parents are already struggling with my sister's cancer, and they've been spending money on chemo. They don't have insurance, and no one is willing to help. It's really messed up here. I told my fiancé that I'm starting to save money to be able to afford a wedding expenses, and she didn't accept, saying that I sneak my money behind her back to help my parents pay for my sister's treatment. I told her that I can't turn down my parents, who are struggling and have no one who can support, not to mention paying her for things like presents, slash clothes, slash dinners, etc. Last week, she received a wedding invitation from her best friend and she came to see me looking so upset, telling me that her friend is getting married before her, and she hated that. She said that her best friend apparently got herself a reliable fiancé, unlike me, and she said she got sick of people asking her when she'll get married. I told her to tell them off, it wasn't their business, but she told me that I needed to do something. She told me to stop answering calls from my dad, so he won't take money from me, and that I needed to sell my $17,000 Hyundai accent to pay for the wedding. She even said that we needed to get married before the end of 2020. I argued with her about her unreasonable request and how I'm going to lose my job if I sell my car and end up unemployed after looking for so long. That's not a way to get married. She refused to drop it, called and texted to convince me that if we don't get married before the end of 2020, then there will not be a wedding at all. Friday, I came across an ad online and saw my car for sale with pictures. When I confronted her, she said she was handling it and was going to tell me as soon as she found a buyer. I got mad at her and I haven't seen her ever since. She's crying saying that I'm picking a car over her and that she was trying to make this work for us. Edit, I took a screenshot of the ad on Facebook so she won't deny it. I'm in the Middle East. You can see the screenshot on my Reddit profile. It has been posted for five days. Now for the top comments of this post. Dude, you don't need to get rid of the car. You need to get rid of the fiancé. Edit, I got a horse head in my bed because I didn't give a verdict, not the a-hole. But dude, get a better fiancé. Exactly, what good qualities does this woman have? She sounds straight up awful. Yeah, some people have a really messed up idea of love. If getting married is so important, then go to the registry office and make it official. If she needs a ceremony, I'm guessing the $17,000 Hyundai is worth $10,000 secondhand. Then she isn't really going to impress her friends anyway for that kind of cash. Opie needs to find a better fiancé. You're the a-hole because you haven't ended your relationship with this trash person. She is bullying you into marrying her. Why are you letting her? Upvoted for the most honest answer in the thread, and the tough love that's needed here. Take a minute, get drunk, and then read your post like a friend made it, and not you. And give the post her honest advice. Not the a-hole, and break up with her. Your sister's cancer is more important than your wedding. You can do a courthouse wedding if she wants to be married. She doesn't want marriage. She wants a big, beautiful, expensive party all about her. Also, technically, she should be paying for your wedding as well. Why isn't her family helping? You did nothing wrong. Her family is unbearable. They feel like it's my job to please them and do things for them, while she does nothing to get them to stop. They don't have a sick family member like I do, and they rely on others for things to be done, and I'm one of the many people they take advantage of. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for walking out of my fiancé's friend's wedding reception? Background, my, male 29, fiancé, female 33, has been asking me to go with her to a co-worker's wedding for about a few weeks. I expressed anxiety about it because, one, I'm a huge introvert, have social anxiety, and wouldn't know anyone else. Two, there's a pandemic. I live in the US, it ended up being over 100 people, less than five wore masks at any given time. She put some pressure on me told me it would mean a lot to her, and she wanted me to meet her work friends. Was talking to a friend about making compromises for your relationship, so I decided to go and try to put on a brave face and have fun. And I really did have fun for about the first two and a half hours. Still anxious, but met some nice people, had a decent time. Then, a guy started yelling loudly near her friend, who was one of three black people there, about his political views, started following our group around seemingly wherever we went, yelling randomly about it, then looking at him seemingly to see if he would react. At that point, my anxiety was bad, because negative attention-seeking people like that stressed me out, and he'd clearly been drinking. 
So, we were chatting outside in a small group, feeling the anxiety getting worse. Tried to nudge her, saying we needed to head home to feed our dog. He usually eats at 6.30, and we wouldn't get home until 10. She basically just ignored me and said he'd be fine, which is true, and I should have just been honest about how I was feeling. Then, they call everyone in for the speeches. I'm walking behind my significant other, and as soon as I hit a doorway, I kind of freak out. All of the lights and people and noise just hit me, so I turned around and just walked to the car. Didn't have my phone to text her, so I just stood out there for 15 to 20 minutes. When she came out, she was pissed. She cried and told me how upset, angry, and hurt she was for most of the hour and a half drive home until she just stopped talking. This was yesterday, and all day she's barely spoken to me. When she has, it's been very short. Tried to explain my side, but she said she feels like she has to concede to make me comfortable. For some context, we moved 800 plus miles from our family and friends for our careers two years ago. It's been difficult to find people we connect with. She said it hurt the most that she was finally having a good time and feeling comfortable here and I couldn't stick it out for her. I get how disappointing that must have felt, but it also feels like she has no empathy for me. Am I the a-hole? Now let's read the top judgment for this post. No a-holes here. She has a right to be disappointed and you have a right to your feelings in that situation. You need to come up with coping strategies for these situations. For example, in a situation like this, perhaps you should have taken two cars so she could stay with her friends and you could go. Or have an agreement that if it gets too much, you can sit in the car a while to decompress. These things need to be talked out before the event though. No a-holes here. Your anxiety is a medical condition and you tried really hard to overcome it. Honestly, you should be really proud of yourself for making it there and keeping things under control for as long as you did. That said, her hurt slash disappointment is understandable. The night meant a lot to her. You both sound like good people. Give her some time to calm down and then discuss what the triggers were. Hopefully, you can work together to get through the next event. She cried and told me how upset, angry, and hurt she was for most of the hour and a half drive home until she just stopped talking. Wow. This seems like a big emotional response from her. Like a really big response. Without having her half of the story, it's hard to make a judgment. I mean, in an ideal universe, you would have given her the courtesy of flagging her and saying, simply, I need some air. A quick text would have prevented this entire ordeal. Next time, bring your phone and just put it on silent. It sounds like you need to talk to each other about what you need from one another. She needs to say what she needs from you, and you need to say what you need from her. My ruling is no a-holes here. I'd recommend showing her this post. Not the a-hole. I have an anxiety disorder, and if I was in that situation, the flight instinct kicks in and you can't think straight. You run until you are in a safe space. It is not healthy for you to have gone into just make her happy when it was going to eat you up on the inside. I would just explain to her how anxious you were and how anxiety doesn't turn off when you want it to. You try your best, and that's better than not going at all. Now for the final story. Am I the a-hole for going to my friend's wedding even though her mom and dad, who is the father of my child, will be there? When I was 19, I met a guy in his 40s at university. He told me he was married and had three kids, but his wife was dead. So he wanted to keep us secret until the kids were ready to hear about us. When we'd been together for 18 months, I found out I was pregnant. He freaked out and admitted his wife was not actually dead. Needless to say, we broke up. Then began a custody battle. And when I say battle, I mean battle. As his wife said, he could only keep the kid if they got full custody and I got nothing. Because she didn't want to deal with me for 18 years. After a lot of BS from the wife, they only got visitation every two weeks. Because of her all or nothing mentality and finding out that her actions had resulted in visitation only, they decided to not be involved at all beyond child support. During the custody case, I met his other kids. His sons both hated me, but his daughter, Kate, who was six months younger than me, felt that her dad was the only one who should get in trouble here. Kate wanted a relationship with her youngest brother, who is still an infant and who I now had full custody of. I agreed to letting her see her brother, and we actually became pretty good friends, as we were a similar age, with similar interests, and she spent a lot of time with the baby. A few years ago, I introduced Kate to a friend of mine, and now they're getting married. My son and I are still a touchy subject with Kate's parents, and Kate says her mom regularly complains about the child support. However, Kate wants her little brother at her wedding, and she and the groom both want me there. The wedding isn't until next summer, and the invites haven't even gone out yet. But she sorted out her guest list, and me and my son, who is now six, 
are both on it. I've already said we'll be there. Kate's parents have seen the guest list. Her mother has messaged me asking me to not attend. I've refused, and she called me unreasonable and said I messed up her family six years ago. She doesn't want any drama or BS like my son recognizing her husband as his father, which she will be able to do as he's seen pictures and knows that Kate is his half-sister, or the affair being made known to their wider family. She also doesn't like my friendship with Kate, and has said that she doesn't want to see my face at Kate's wedding, as I've humiliated her enough. My point of view is that Kate has asked me to be there. I'm friends with Kate and her soon-to-be husband, and my son is already excited to go. Plus, it's not like I'm going to take the microphone and go, Attention! My six-year-old is the bastard child of the bride's father. Cheers to the bride and groom. Plus, I don't have a problem with them being there, despite the stunts the wife pulled when we were sorting custody. So, if they're the ones putting their foot down, I feel they should be the ones to not go. I talked to my roommate about it, and the roommate said that while she's a witch, I did F her husband, and I'd be bringing his child to the wedding. Am I the a-hole for still wanting to go despite Kate's mother telling me not to? Now let's read the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your roommate is off base by saying you F her husband. He told you his wife was dead, and you didn't learn she wasn't until you got pregnant. Only you can decide if it's worth attending, but the wife is seriously misplacing her anger that should be directed at her husband for being a cheater. Yes, I hate when people blame the other women who didn't even know she was the other woman. It's not like she intentionally wrecked a home. Why is the bride's mother so keen on defending and standing by a man who A. Cheated on her and B. Claimed she was dead. Why are the brothers standing by a man who did that to their mother and hating a woman who thought she was banging a widower? Edit, I know people do that and I get the mindset behind it, but it's still an a-hole thing to do. No matter how much better it is for you psychologically, it doesn't give you the moral high ground to do that. Please stop explaining this to me over and over again, like I fell off the turnip truck yesterday. I get it, I get it, I get it. Guy also took advantage of her. He's 40 years old and he had S with a 19-year-old. The blaming that the roommate is doing, as well as the wife, are directed at the wrong person and it's disgusting to blame a teenager over the grown man. Kate is ridiculously mature. She's amazing. Ugh. You slept with a widower, not a husband. You thought the wife was dead because he's a liar. None of this is your fault. Go to the wedding and have a great time with your son and your friends. Everyone else can suck an egg, not the a-hole. Perfectly states, His lies and the wife's lack of respect for herself do not constitute a good enough reason for Opie not to attend. Gonna hijack this to say that if she doesn't let Kate know what her mom has said, she would be the a-hole. Because her mom will cause drama at the wedding. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.